Well, it took me way too goddamn long to do this, and I'm a bit ashamed of myself and damn right angry, but here it is. My greatest, dare I say, the greatest tier list of all time. It is the tier list of Cars films. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a monster. They are all S tier. They are all perfect tens. They are the Madison beer of Pixar franchises. There is not one better or worse than each other. They're all perfect. In this video, instead, I'll be talking to you about the cultural impact and character developments and general wonderfulness of all these films. We'll start off with the first movie. Now, Cars 1 was um, extremely ambitious for Pixar to be doing because this was going to be one of their first films without people, ex excluding Bugs Life. It was so unique. Like, I imagine just like the director was, and the writers were just like, hey man, what if we got Cars and we put a movie about them and they're like, that's the first one for like, <laughs> no, no, but we get this. What if the Cars were racing? And then the producer's like, again, that's, that's Fast and Furious, Bill. And he's like, but what if, what if the cars talked and they were their own racers? My God, Bill, you're a goddamn genius. It's beautiful. No, don't stop there. Who is one of the best, most masculine, tough men right now in the market in 2006? Can you name that person? Um, that would be like um, Tom Cruise, uh, Mark Wahlberg, <laughs> those punks. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a man who wows and amazes people. Bill, I don't know what you're getting at here, but I, I would like an answer. I'm talking about Owen Wilson. Here's 120 million dollars. Now give me that goddamn Owen Wilson movie. So, Cars One is quite the phenomenon. To the uneducated and very uncultured few, it is Pixar's worst film, and it is something that brought down the animation studio's consistent quality and creativity. But those people are just gosh darn wrong. Cars is an emotive story. The hero's redemption arc. It is about a man who has gotten... Well, not a man, I'm sorry. It is about a car who has gotten too close to the sun and has let his own ego, vanity, and selfishness get in the way of his sport and his ability to create long-lasting friendships and memories in life. So essentially, he's become unpure, a remodel in a vintage car universe. And during one of his Grand Prix, he is taken off course and sabotaged and sent out into the country where he learns lessons about life and how he should not be a selfish car, but a caring car. By learning from the great Dog Hudson, also known as Paul Newman, the king himself, Owen Wilson has a full on 180 character arc that sort of regresses in the second film, like all sequel films do. I just got to point out, isn't it weird how, like, films are about characters having a bunch of, how it's about, isn't it weird how films are about characters being extremely flawed and then developing from that to the point where they're a different person at the end of the film, but then when they're in the sequel, they're almost, like, semi-close to the person they were in the first film, and sometimes even worse, so I don't know whether that's lazy writing or it's really good writing, because most people who do tend to try and change eventually go back to where they were at the start. And that always amazes me, because third movie, Light Lightning McQueen has sort of regressed in a character arc, and that does exist, where you have, like, um, a deterioration of someone's character, but it doesn't seem like it comes from any place at all, considering he's learned, and there's nothing really devastating that's happened in his life, or, like, you know, over-vexing to cause this. And that always just fascinates me about characters. And I think that's why Cars is one just one of those... One of those films that film critics have mired and everyone else has just stared and gawked at and thought, wow, I wish I could make a masterpiece like that, but I probably never will. Now, cultural impact wise, toys. This thing sold off the charts because 
you basically have the toy car market into the place and also weird dumb babies who like Pixar toys and you've just combined that and you've just you've just raked in the cash and you have all these play sets and you also have all kinds of wonderful games that you can also have with it because they're cars and they race it was a gold mine the start and I can see why Pixar continued it but it's also one other thing that it's influenced I'd say cars arguably created a generation of men of culture, and I don't think anyone else can argue that at all. Lightning McQueen is iconic. Cars is iconic. Doc Hudson is an icon. Now, moving on to Cars 2. People say this is the most disappointing of the franchise, but those people would be fucking wrong, because there is no such thing as a disappointment in Cars the movie, because Cars the movie is perfect is fucking perfect there's nothing wrong with the films they're all 10 out of 10 masterpieces steven spielberg aspires to make cars i believe he once said in a quote i'm dumb filmmaker i ruin indiana jones and i wish i make cars to the movie instead of indiana jones 4 and you know from men who made such classics as et and the first indiana jones and the second indiana jones and the third indiana jones It takes a lot of pride and guts to admit something like that. And I respect Steven for doing that, even though what he's put out now has been pretty much garbage compared to Cars 1, 2, and 3. But 2 focuses not mostly on Lightning McQueen, but his mate Mater. And the film was better for it. (laughs) Wow, what a deep character. People just assumed he was dumb and useless and annoying an extremely backward stereotype of southern people and almost debilitating to the mentally disabled community. But no, he's more than that. He got a new paint job. And he looked very nice. This is one of those rare films that I would have to give the coveted 11 out of 10 because it is just it is just something else. <sighs> just think, it was such a good film and it didn't even have Lightning McQueen as the main focal point of the film. Just... <sighs> amazing amazing just just a great film now its cultural impact was just as impactful as the first marketing wise toys will always sell for these kinds of franchises and it did quite well at the box office but not too well because it would delay the release of cars 3 sequel for many years and i don't know whether this was pixar trying to make sure that it was the best possible film ever, or that it slightly underperformed to the point where they would delay the project. But critics love this film. Critics would say it is one of the best animated films of those years and of the 2010s. Nothing touches Cars 2. Except Cars 3, baby! (laughs) Woo! Yeah. Imagine taking the fun and personality that is made up and lightning mcqueen's regressive character arc and you put that into a film and you get cars three baby oh my goodness you get cars three. Ooh, this is dark this is one of those dark kids movies when i saw that i was in 2016 i cried i cried like a baby even though i was 16 i cried because that was sad watching him flip lightning mcqueen flip was just a tragic 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 scene and i was bawling my eyes out i i cried all over my popcorn and i just I didn't recover for days. I took about a good week off school. Teachers understood. I told them I saw Cast 3 Baby and it was it was an emotional journey. It was emotive. I even wrote an essay on it and it got like 100%, even though that doesn't happen a lot. But it did. It was just that heartwarming that the teacher was like, you know what? This is beautiful. And then he watched Cast 3. And then he took three weeks off. It was, it was devastating. It was a devastating week. It was a dangerous, dangerous film. 